The quest for the throne is on. The quest for the throne is on. When you read the scenes, there's a journey in there. Um, and then I've got to try and find a way to achieve what's on the page and then make it interesting. You choreograph all this real action, and then I'm thinking, OK, how safe can I make it? I can put a wire on them and desell them. I can bury a mat. You know, we're trying to create this really dynamic frame of action. We'd love to go home at the end of the day and, you know, no one's paid any kind of price for it. Action for you. OK, there will be a background action first, guys. Ready? 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 We burn more people than anybody else, basically. And there is a bit of mental preparation goes into these things, but it's really controlled. It's a real process. We do lots of rehearsals where we put the masks on people, walk to where we were going to do the burn with their hands on the shoulder, their safety guys, and we line them all up. We then really methodically practice what, like, what we would call like our fire dance, which is uh, when you are then set on fire, the, the route you take in the scene to where you then lie down to be extinguished by the safety guys. 12, 13, 14, 15, out, out, out. Safety precautions are really experienced. We have guys covering them at all times. We only burn them for 15 seconds because uh, that ensures that we're not going to have any significant heat transfer. They wear three layers of Nomex underwear. It won't burn, it won't melt like a man-made fabric. Um, that's soaked in a fireproof gel we put into a, a fridge, and so that's taken down to almost freezing. Then they put on a thin rain suit over the top, then a fire suit on top of that, then a boiler suit to protect the fire suit, and then the costume. So there's quite a few layers going on. The latex mask that's on your face has got a really small hole that you have to breathe through, because obviously when you're on fire, you bite down on that, and that stops any fumes or flame coming through the mask. The, the aim of it is to be really calm, really relaxed, get your heart rate down, just listen to every single word Rowley's saying, because if you do, then the shot will work and everything will be fine. The show just, just keeps getting bigger. We did 73 full fire burns during Loot Train. We did 20 in one shot. That was a record for TV. We didn't do it wantonly to set a record. I was aware of it, obviously, um, and everyone likes that. But, uh, you know, it was for the shot. That was the shield wall and everyone getting hit. So it had a purpose, not just a record. The cut! It is a little stressful, but with all stunt work, um, it's, you, it's about harnessing that stress and channeling it, you know, that kind of energy. Fear is really good. Fear will keep you safe, but you need to just channel that fear and use that energy to, to achieve what you want to achieve. Yeah. Happy days. I wanted to finish it. There was no way I was not going to come back for season eight, you know, but I think the story is nearly ready to be completely told. Um, so that's so it's mixed. So it's a little bit it's tinged with a little bit of sadness, but proud that I've been part of it for four years. You know, I've done half of it, um, and, I, and I've enjoyed every moment of it. You know, so um, I will always look back on this very fondly. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. They dropped a couple new Game of Thrones season eight promos. We break down. There's also a couple interviews that they did with Sir Jorah talking about Jon Snow and Daenerys. There's something about Tyrion. So we'll break it all down. This is just their next phase of promotion as they get closer and closer. I am doing a new round of the book giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on the video. They're also doing a special real life treasure hunt where you try to find an iron throne at six different places around the world. They're not really clear about what happens if you actually find one of the thrones, if you win tickets to the premiere or you win some special prize or something like that. But apparently it's counting down for the next 15 days or so, which is well before the start of the season. So maybe in another 15 days is when we'll get another really big trailer. But as you can tell, most of this promo is them showing you how they burn people with the dragons as they've gotten bigger and bigger each season. They burn more and more people, setting a couple records. We burn more people than any other TV show in creation right now. 
That's a pretty awesome record to hold. And then you consider that the dragons are even bigger during season eight. I've gotten a lot of questions about how much bigger. So we'll talk about that in a second. But this is Jon Snow fighting whites with Tormund at Hardhome. Not a whole lot of burning going on during Hardhome. Just burning some of those shacks down. The White Walker stepping through it. Which is still probably one of the coolest shots that they had at that point in the show. The white that Jon Snow is fighting during that action scene when he steps through the fire is actually the same actor in real life that's playing the Night King the last couple of seasons on the show. Ever since season six, for whatever reason, the actor who played the Night King up to Hardhome didn't come back for more seasons after that. But you do really notice the difference if you watch Hardhome, then you go and you watch all the season six episodes and all of a sudden the Night King looks completely different. Like, wait a minute, what's going on here? They use a little bit of footage from Battle of the Bastards talking about the horse stunts. This is just when Jon Snow was getting ridden down by the Karstark and the Bolton horse riders. I know a lot of people were asking about the Dothraki during the season 8 trailer, whether or not there were actually dire wolves in the background here, just because there are so many hooves running by. Some of the legs in the background don't seem quite big enough to be horse legs. Yes, I do think that we will see more dire wolves during season 8, but the only dire wolf that they've confirmed is coming back officially is Ghost. So if Nymeria comes back, it will be a surprise, but I've already done a video explaining how George R. R. Martin was foreshadowing Nymeria's super pack being important late in the game. More of Beric Dondarrion fighting with his flaming sword, the Brotherhood without banjos when they were north of the wall in season 7. We've seen him in the trailer. It's not really clear exactly where he is just entering this castle. It could be somewhere further up in the north, maybe near the last hearth, or it could be them back at Winterfell. There's no architecture here that specifically places this in any particular place in the north. Because Ed is with them, this could still be one of the different castles along the wall that they're just seeking refuge in from the Army of the Dead. There's a whole lot of Lannisters being burned during the Field of Fire during Season 7. I love that the stunt performers call it their quote-unquote fire dance, like they're performing the act of Drogon burning them and they're running around like a bunch of fried chickens. As far as we know, during Season 8, especially in that first big battle with the Night King's army, the White Walkers, the Whites, most of the people being burned will be that giant white army with the dragons just cutting wide swaths through them. There are a lot of theories, though, that the Night King is going to swerve and call an audible, leave his White Walker generals to fight the battle at Winterfell and turn himself and try to go down to King's Landing. Whether or not he actually makes it to King's Landing remains to be seen, but that would be the only way you actually see the Golden Company actually get to do a really big battle before the end of the season, because otherwise they're just going to be sitting there chilling out until Jon Snow and Daenerys' remaining forces make it south to deal with Cersei. So you guys can let me know in the comments, do you actually think that the Night King himself will do battle at Winterfell or if he will just turn and head south to King's Landing to try and get them to fight a war on two fronts? Because that would be a really easy way for him to win. Because looking at some of these promo pictures, you actually see the Night King in front of this door here. I looked twice at some of the other photos. In the knocker there, in the pattern of the door, is the exact same as the door here in King's Landing behind Cersei when she's sitting here. So these are just promo pictures. It doesn't necessarily confirm that the Night King is actually at the gates to King's Landing, but that would be a really cool twist. Because it's one thing for them to have all those combined forces at Winterfell. They do have a really strong chance of winning. But no matter how badass the Golden Company is, we don't have any evidence that Cersei has anything at King's Landing that's capable of killing the Night King. She could probably use one of Kyburn's scorpions to bring down Viserion, but that wouldn't kill the Night King. And he's so powerful that he could just cut right through any minor infantrymen that come at him turn them, raise them back up, and his forces start to grow exponentially, and eventually you overrun King's Landing with a bunch of whites. One of her other special moves that she's had the last couple of seasons has been Wildfire. There's no evidence in the books right now that lets us know whether or not Wildfire is more effective than regular fire against the White Walkers and the Whites, because the Night King here is seen up north of the wall during episode 6, walking right through those flames and not even batting an eye, as if they don't affect him, so regular fire doesn't seem that effective against him. And remember, this actually isn't just regular fire, it's dragon fire. So if dragon fire isn't that effective against him, then I don't know how much more effective wildfire could be. It would just potentially burn a little bit longer, but I'm sure that he has enough magic to put that fire out pretty quickly. 
talking a little bit about the interviews that they just did. They did one with Sir Jor. He talked a little bit about Jon Snow and Daenerys. It's not quite as illuminating as I would have hoped. He mostly talks about how Sir Jorah feels about Daenerys and what his position is in the Jon Snow Daenerys of it all. Because so much of the last couple of seasons has been about bringing them together and then now the suspense of waiting to see what's going to happen when they all find out that Jon Snow is secretly a Targaryen, they're related, and Daenerys might be potentially pregnant. So you have a couple of these extra characters like Jorah and Tyrion who at one time or another had romantic feelings for Daenerys. So the actors just talked a little bit about that. The way that Ian Glenn, Sir Jorah, explains it now is, is that after season four when she banished him, then he came back during season five, won her affection, then had to leave her again because of the grayscale, then came back during season seven. By the time he had come back, all of his desire for a romantic relationship with Daenerys was gone. He was just happy to be in her presence. He registers that there's something special going on between the two of them. He's mostly just supportive of Daenerys. He feels like Jon Snow is a good match for her because he is the king in the north. So he's thinking about it from more of a political angle and just trying to serve her in the best possible way. And obviously he really likes being on the field of battle. That's why in the season eight trailer, you see him on horseback wielding Heartsbane because Samwell has apparently given it to him. So he will be wielding a Valyrian sword during season eight. I've already talked a little bit about Tyrion's side in all this because apparently Peter Dinklage is like, no, he definitely has romantic feelings for Daenerys. He's a little conflicted about it and he's a little worried about how their relationship is going to complicate the alliance and what they have to do during season eight. But that's all he's really said about it. He hasn't said anything that's implied that he would betray Daenerys, but there are a couple of foreshadowing moments during season seven that imply that he's going to have a real problem in assaulting Cersei by the end of the season. So if there are any more clues for a Tyrion betrayal in any of the season eight trailers that we get between now and then, I'll talk more about that. But right now we don't have quite enough evidence to confirm that. Just to address the dragon's size issue, for those of you that are wondering how much bigger Drogon is, they haven't given official models for scale. But if you look at Jon Snow and Daenerys walking up to Drogon and Rhaegal, what it looks like here is that Rhaegal is about as big as Drogon was, and Drogon is maybe 25%, 30% bigger. I wouldn't say he's double in size because he was already really big. Like, look at how big they all are sitting on top of Drogon during episode six. Now his head looks big enough that Daenerys could sit right behind his horns and just grab his horns and use those to stabilize herself when she's riding him. There are a lot of you that have asked about Jon Snow potentially riding Rhaegal during season eight. I've already talked about a couple scenes during the season eight trailer where I think that Jon Snow is riding dragons and they just digitally altered it or they haven't added his character model to it so that you don't know exactly what's happening. So I'll link that at the end of this. Congratulations, Olipop. You're the giveaway winner for my last big Game of Thrones video. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your details. Click here for my Game of Thrones season eight trailer video about all the potentially misleading scenes where Jon may or may not be riding Rhaegal and click here for my really big Night King Easter egg video. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.